Something really weird has been happening to me recently. Something that I need to talk to you guys about because I feel guilty. I feel like I'm getting a divorce. There is watches that are in my collection that I no longer wear. That are sitting at the back of my drawer or my safe. That are just gathering dust. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the watches that I no longer wear that are in my collection and why. Welcome back to the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison, as always. And before we crack into this video, I noticed that 82.9% of you that watch these videos haven't yet subscribed to the channel. If you could do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate it massively. So guys, my watch collection has been growing arms and legs, and it's potentially just because I'm getting a little bit older and I've been working in this industry since I was 17 or 16. And I've broken my watches in my collection down into four categories to kind of streamline this process before we talk about the watches that I don't wear anymore. Now, the first category is loyal. I am loyal to certain watch brands, certain watches, because of the sentimental attachment that I put onto the watches. And I think my Amiga Seamaster is a perfect example of this. At number two, we have the love affair. And this is watches that you kind of fall in and out of love with. You have your time with and then you, you escape. <laughs> this is watches like my Grand Seiko, American exclusive. Coming in at number three, we have the hype purchases. This is the purchases that you just don't think about. You're so caught up in this little bubble of marketing that you buy the watch without actually thinking about where you're going to use it. This is the Amiga X watches of the world, the Moon Swatches, or the Blompan X watch scubas of the world. And at number four, in my case, we have the gifted section. Sometimes watch brands gift me watches to do videos on said watches. And if I like the brand and I like the the watch itself, I will do said video and I will take said watch. And after they gift me the watch, it could land in any of the three categories that I just covered. And now that I've kind of laid the land for you, and now that I've kind of gone through each category of watch purchase that I have, let's get each watch out and explain what happened, why I don't love them anymore. Up first, we have the Blompan X Swatch Scuba Antarctic Ocean. And this fell solidly straight into category number three. It fell straight into hype purchases. The thing about this watch purchase that was different to the Moon Swatch is that I related the Moon Swatch to a memory. When I was in Zermatt with Adrian, uh, I was filming a project with him and we, at the end of the trip, went into the Swatch store. And together, we all bought a Moon Swatch. And that was a really beautiful moment. It was a really beautiful memory to connect with that watch. However, when I bought this, it was more the marketing. It was more that other people were buying it and I felt left out. And what's different to this uh, than the Moon Watch is that it's just so damn big. I mean, it comes in at 14.4 mil in thickness and 42.3 mil in diameter. Plus you have a double pass NATO strap pushing it further off the wrist. Now, yes, you have a system 51 movement, which is really cool. And I'm kind of in love with the details that they put on this watch. I truly am. I'm also in love with the fact that it directly raised awareness for Blompan as a brand because they are an incredible brand. They are the oldest watch brand in history, not in continuous production because that goes to Vacheron, but in history, which is amazing. But I just feel that I didn't connect a memory with this watch when I could have and I probably should have. And as a result, it went to the back of my drawer and it never left. Next up, we have a watch that fell solidly into the love affair category. It, it fell into a category that I loved it when I first bought it. And now I don't really know why I got it. I feel like I was substituting this for something that I really wanted. It, it, was, it was buying something because I could instead of waiting out for the thing that I really, maybe really wanted, which was the Amiga Snoopy edition which I probably could never get, but nevertheless. There's tons of this watch that I love, please don't get me wrong. There are tons of features and flex and Seiko specs that have been thrown into this watch that is just incredible to me. I mean, Snoopy on the dial, you have him with his surfboard on the back. You also have a colored date wheel. Every now and again, a color shows on the, on the date, for example, Saturday and Sunday, red and blue. You also have the Snoopy font on the bezel. There's lots of cool stuff with this watch. However, the reason that it was a love affair, the reason that I got divorced from this watch, so to speak, is that this model took its place. The Hamilton Khaki Field Expedition came just after I'd got my, my Snoopy uh, Seiko. And 
the reason that I switched to be in love with the Khaki Expedition instead of the Seiko is again because of the memory that I attached to it. I was moving place at that point. I was I was moving flat. So I kind of related the new beginning aspect with my Hamilton Khaki Expedition instead of my Seiko. So whenever I look at my Seiko, I think it's cool. Yeah, it's a great watch. But whenever I look at my Expedition, it represents a new beginning and also going on an expedition, <laughs> going to Banff with Adrian and with the Hamilton team, which was a really amazing experience. So I just feel that I related a lot of, a lot more personal connection with the Hamilton expedition. Yeah, that's uh, that's a watch that I do feel bad about about ditching, so to speak, because because it, it did cost a fair amount of money, and it is a lovely piece. Maybe I'll sell it, but I don't. You know, one of those things that you just can't sell. You can't bring yourself to sell, but you don't wear it. It's almost like buying a camera. I have cameras up there that I've not used in years, but because they're my cameras and because I kind of have a thing for cameras, like I do for watches, I don't want to get rid of them. Before we go any further, why don't you fall into categories one and two and have a loyal love affair with Chisholm Hunter? Head to Chisholm Hunter for your next watch purchase. We're official stockists of a ton of brands, Tudor, Amiga, Grand Seiko, Casio, you name it, we've probably got it. Head to chismhunter.co.uk for your next watch. Next up, we have, <laughs> this, is a, this is a tough one to swallow. This, this falls into two categories. It's loyalty, but also love affair. Now, I love the Tissot brand. And as soon as I saw the AP Royal Oak, that 70s inspired Genta design, I could never afford it. And I kind of knew that, but I always wanted it. And as soon as the Tissot PRX was released, I knew. I remember talking to Drew, who's sitting behind the camera right now. As soon as those watches came in, I was obsessed. I loved how, how affordable they were and how they gave you the 70s design, the 70s uh, inspired Genta style, so to speak. However, instantly when I bought this watch, I had buyer's remorse. And let me tell you why. It wasn't about the quality. It wasn't about the aesthetic. It wasn't about the bracelet or having a rubber strap. It wasn't about any of that. It's about the fact that they released the ice blue version just after I bought the green version. And I wanted that ice blue version. And that kind of brings me on to the love affair bit. Christopher Ward quickly got in contact and said that they wanted me to do a video on the 12. And they sent me out a Christopher Ward 12 in ice blue, I believe it's called Glacier Blue with Christopher Ward, to do a review on. And they allowed me to keep that watch. Quickly, that watch just became the piece that I wore all the time. The 70s inspired piece that I wore that replaced the Tissot. And I feel guilty saying it because I have a ton of loyalty to this brand because they are amazing. However, I kind of feel that I should have waited out for the Ice Blue PRX. And now that I've got the Christopher Ward 12, which is better quality because it's more expensive, I don't see the point in getting the Ice Blue PRX. So this watch is sat in the back of my safe and I've not worn it. I probably will get it back on, but at the moment, I don't see the point. And on that note, it is time for the wrist check. What is on your wrist today? I'm tired of talking about my watches. Let's talk about your watches. Please let me know in the comments. Next up is a watch brand that people won't even think of. People won't even know that I have. And the reason that they won't know I have it is because to be honest, I don't speak enough about it. They are an incredible brand with amazing history. And to top it off, they supported us when nobody else would, when this channel was in its infancy. It is the Certina DS Action Diver. Now this watch falls straight and strictly under the gifted category. I did not buy this watch. I was given this watch to film and to do a video with. However, I do really like it. I love the specs. I love the dimensions. I love the fact that they support a turtle conservation charity with the, the box. It's made out of recyclable goods. We've done a, a video on it. However, what I am as keen on is the colorway and the bimetal. I say bimetal, the gold is PVD gold. To be honest, I'm not as keen on blue dials, especially this kind of vibrant blue, especially when you match it with that yellowy kind of PVD gold texture. I'm also not a fan of getting PVD gold watches because it seems 
a little bit show-offy to me. It seems like you're trying to show the world that you have something that maybe you don't. And it's okay if you can't, I mean, I can't afford a gold watch. I don't have any gold watches. However, this just seems a bit flash for me. With that said, everything else about this watch is absolutely brilliant. I mean, the way that it wears, the, 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 the fit, the diameter, the case specs, the thickness, the bezel, the rotatable bezel. I mean, listen to this. It's pretty good. Honestly, it's really good. It's just the colorway and the aesthetics, but that could be tweaked. And actually looking at their new range, I was researching them a little bit today, they brought out a new titanium DS action diver and it has kind of baby blue uh, indices and, and specs on there. And it honestly looks amazing. That is a watch that I would wear. So honestly, this one, I fell out of love because of the aesthetics, but the actual watch and product itself it's really good. Next up, we have one of my favorite watches that I no longer wear, which seems a little bit weird, but hear me out. This is my Grand Seiko American exclusive. It's one of my favorite watches of all time, but it does fall under the hype purchase and love affair category. Now, there's a couple of different reasons as to why I don't wear this watch much. And one of the reasons is the polishing that Grand Seiko use. On one hand, the polishing is beautiful. It's unbeatable. Honestly, Grand Seiko's polishing is second to none. It's one of the, or some of the best in the world. But on the other hand, what happens to polished metal when you are out and about? What happens to polished metal, Drew, when you're out and about? It does get pretty scratched up. It gets pretty mangled. And actually, as you can see from my very limited wear of this watch, it's pretty mangled. Now, when you have... OCD, like most watch enthusiasts do, that really frustrates you. So what's happened to this watch is it's been sitting in the back of a safe and only being brought out for extra, extra, extra special occasions, whether that's fancy dinners or business meetings or charity balls, those kind of events. But because I'm kind of an introvert and a hermit, I don't go out that much, meaning this just hasn't had that much wrist time. On that note, it's not ever... I would never sell this watch. I would never replace this watch. I love this watch, but it just doesn't seem to get the wrist time. It's a watch that I own, I love, but don't use. The next watch on the wrist is, is one that I carry a huge amount of memories with. I coincide uh, a ton of cool memories with this watch when I was in Finland. I was filming a project for G-Shock Casio and also Glass Hootie original. And I went to Finland, I saw the Northern Lights, we went uh, husky sledding, we went snowmobiling. It was honestly a really awesome trip with two very good friends that are also videographers and photographers. So this watch has a lot of sentimental value to me, but it does fall under the gifted category. After we filmed this video for Casio and G-Shock, I said, listen, do you guys want this watch back? And they said, no, you can keep it. You can keep this watch because... Uh, we love the video and thank you very much, which was so kind of them. However, what happened just after that is Garmin sent me out a watch to use because I do a lot of sports and it quickly replaced this watch on the wrist because to be honest, this watch is humongous. Now I'm not dissing it. I'm not, I'm not bashing it in any way. However, it's a unique taste. It's like a fine malt whiskey. Only certain people like it. And it's not that I don't like this watch. I'm just, I'm just too skinny. I don't take steroids and I'm a big boy. And that's just my kind of natural physique. I'm just quite a slender guy. And because this watch is so big, it just doesn't fit my more slender style. That's all. However, on the flip side, I could never get rid of this watch because of the sentimental attachment that I have with this model. Um, and also, I do wear this sometimes when I'm up in the hills because I think it looks pretty damn cool. I love Casio as a brand. I love them as a partner. And there you have it. These are the watches that I own but do not wear. And this is why. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button or follow us on Instagram, Chisholm Hunter Watches. Again, guys, I just want to thank you so much for the support. And I'll see you guys real soon.